This is Michael Popak, and it's so dark it must be legal AF after dark. You know all about the Trump conviction, but what about the aftermath? What does it mean for him as a felon, not just running for the presidency? What about his voting rights? What about his ability to own a gun or travel internationally? What happens in the sentencing and the appeal process? We break it all down on one, in one place, Legal AF, the podcast, and here's a clip. Take a listen. Yeah, Popak, what I want to talk about now, though, is... Donald Trump is a convicted felon, right? That carries with it implications. Um, those implications can even get more severe and serious and will when sentencing takes place on July 11th. But as a convicted felon, your ability to travel outside of the country to places like Canada, UK, and numerous other countries across the world is prohibited. You quite literally are banned from countries if you are a convicted felon. Also, your ability to possess firearms is uh, prohibited or severely restricted um, at the federal level and in uh, and across the country in various, uh, in various states. Um, and so it just wants you to think about that and potentially the ability to vote. Um, in Florida, there's a wrinkle on that about whether felons can vote, but just in general, just think about it like this. Um, you can't possess firearms. You can't travel to many countries outside of the country. You know, you're likely, you know, I, I want to get your take, but I think Justice Mershon is likely either going to give a, a sentence where show up in prison. I think he'll definitely give house confinement or home confinement. The question is, is it serve the time in Rikers plus confinement, just serve the time in Rikers, but he's going to sentence Donald Trump. Anyone who says he's not sentencing Donald Trump or it's just going to be probation, I think they're very wrong about that. Um, first and foremost, go read the falsification of business records cases, felonies, that these cases have sentences and Justice Mershon has been a law and order judge. This is the most egregious falsification of business records case in the history of New York where the other ones got prison sentences. Donald Trump's behavior, not just violating the gag order, not just being found in contempt, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, but his conduct leading up uh, to the trial, posting photos with a baseball bat, pretending to bludgeon the district attorney, the lack of remorse. So what will happen when you get to sentencing on July 11th, and I want you to talk a little bit about the probation officer's evaluation of Trump, right? The prosecution is going to submit a sentencing memorandum where I think they'll request that Donald Trump be incarcerated. I think they'll request as much prison time as the law allows, and they'll cite all of Donald Trump's behavior, the way he acted during the trial, the way he's acting now, contempt, the seriousness of the crimes, the lack of remorse, how he started acting in the beginning. And then you also look at someone's past conduct. Donald Trump's been found liable for civil fraud. The Trump organization has been determined in a criminal case to have engaged in felony. So Trump runs a felony organization. Donald Trump has been adjudicated to have engaged in sexual abuse. Donald Trump has been adjudicated to have committed massive civil fraud. All of that is taken into account as well. And to me, when you kind of put all of those elements together, it clearly requires incarceration for a significant period of time. And Justice Mershon, I think, is someone who follows law and order. I think there are logistical issues, but you and I have talked about Rikers would be prepared for Donald Trump. Uh, the mayor of New York and others have been preparing it, so it is something that would be ready. I think the logistical stuff needs to be dealt with. Um, so there, there, there's, there's that coming up on July 11th. But almost regardless of that, now as a convicted felon, it carries with it a number of implications. One other thing before I turn it back over to you, Popak, to give the what comes next, what do we expect that sentencing, the probation report, what do we expect Donald Trump's lawyers to do? You know, really led by right-wing fascist media, people like Mark Levin who talk like that, 
They Mark Levin saying, here's what you need to do. You need to file extraordinary writs. Go to the Supreme Court right now. You need to go to the Supreme Court. You have MAGA Mike Johnson who went on Fox and said, look, I know these Supreme Court justices very well, some of these right wing justices, and I think they'll do the right thing and they'll help Donald Trump out here. It may take some time, but I think, I mean, how ridiculous is that, that that even did? ridiculous isn't the word, how unlawful and harmful to the very fabric of our democracy that that's taking place. But then you had Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, as part of his interviews, talk about that they were going to the Supreme Court and that they would try to find some direct route to the Supreme Court. I want to play this clip, but before playing it, there is no direct route to the Supreme Court right now um, at all. Um, there is no direct route at all. Um, the reality is, the reality is, is that you have to get sentenced. Then you would go to the appellate division. Then you would go to the Court of Appeal in New York is their highest court. The Supreme Court's their trial court, appellate division, then Court of Appeal. And then after the highest court in New York rules, the only way you then go to federal court is if you claim that there's some federal law that supersedes the state law such that the Supreme Court is ruling under the supremacy clause that there's some federal concept that supersedes the state law under basic concepts of federalism. So when they talk about going to the Supreme Court now, I mean, by the way, who knows what upside down flag hanging spouses are insurrectionists like, you know, this Supreme was right wing Supreme Court's like out of control. So who knows what, 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 what they ever do. But the bottom line is there is no process that exists in the law for them to go to the Supreme Court. They're just making this stuff up. Doesn't it, there's no such thing. So they would be filing something that's never been filed before that isn't even doesn't even have a name for it. They'll come up with some name for it. But anyway, let me show you what Todd Blanche said. Then let me get your kind of thoughts, Popak, of the where we go from here, the sentencing, the appeal. What do you expect? Let's play this clip. Well, last question. Will you go to the appellate court, the Supreme Court, both? Both. Look, we're not going to stop fighting. I mean, I don't, you know, everybody's talking on your show and on other shows about going right to the Supreme Court. We're going to do whatever we can. If that means we're going to the, the First Department and the New York Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court, that's what we're going to do. If we can go right to the Supreme Court, that's what we're going to do. There, there's, we're going to do whatever we can. There's no option that we're slamming the door on. Who oh, he reminds me of the weatherman character in Anchorman, Steve Carell. <laughs> He reminds me of the Steve Carell character from Anchorman. Like, for real, like, like, yeah, we're going to the Supreme Court. Uh, what, what does it even mean you're going to the Supreme Court? There's no such thing. Popak, where do we go from here? Yeah, let me touch on that and then, and the, and then go the other place. Um, they can try a writ of habeas corpus. They can try all sorts of things. But common, common variety, garden variety criminals in a state who are convicted by a jury through a process – um, through a proper criminal justice process, starting with a grand jury indictment, um, uh, all the way through a 12-0 presentation, uh, uh, a jury uh, verdict, um, and proper instruction all along the way by the judge is not a something that you are allowed to then say there was some sort of U.S. constitutional due process violation, or everybody would try it. Sure, there might be a couple of MAGA that would over on the Supreme Court that may find it interesting, but I, I just think there is um, no way there's an ice cube chance of hell in hell of a direct appeal to the United States Supreme Court or even jumping over from our state criminal prosecution system over to our federal constitutional system to pick up the senior appellate court there. Not happening. As to what happens next, as I said, Donald Trump is now felon Donald J. Trump. Interesting enough, um, it, uh, it, as this is being reported around the world, and we have a lot, you know, we're very respectful of our audience. We have 140 or more countries that watch Legal AF. The style book for the Independent in the in uh, in London and UK is no longer referring to Donald Trump as Mister Donald J. Trump, not even President Donald J. Trump, because their style book says that once a person is convicted of a felony, he loses the honorific of being a Mister. And so Donald J. Trump is now a felon. And that means in the New York court system, he's going to go with no exception, uh, with no special special dispensation through a process. He has to be interviewed. 
by the probation department. They're going to ask him about his background, about his mental health and mental state. They're going to look through his social media. I mean, these New Yorkers know who Donald Trump is, so they don't have to start off with questions like, um, do you ever use social media to, in a negative way to attack people? They can skip that question. They can go right to, we've looked through all of your social media and it and his conduct including that outstanding conduct about the criminal contempt, which has not yet been resolved by the judge, and is he is still subject, his, his release, his ability to walk around and not be in jail right now, T plus two days from the conviction, is at the discretion of the Judge Mershon and the criminal justice system and the, and the laws of the state of New York, who uh, give, give credit to the prosecution. They didn't ask for bond. They, because he's out on his own recognizance, but all of the conditions that he originally had for his release, including the gag orders, remain in place through sentencing, um, at least through sentencing. Got to go for his interview. Can't phone it in. Can't let the lawyers like Todd Blanche, Mr. Weatherman, do it. He's got to show up and talk to this bureaucrat civil servant about his, uh, So, and why. Because the probation department... Uh, puts together, just like in the federal system, in the pretrial, set, pretrial services, puts together a report with, with um, uh, background information about the felon, the convicted person, and then ultimately recommendations about sentencing. There have been in the state of New York since the laws were passed, about 8,000 entities and people prosecuted under false record act and, and including a second crime. I will just just to manage expectations. About ten percent of that group got jail time. The other ninety percent didn't. But I think you're right, Ben. That given the extraordinary facts here, balanced even against Donald Trump's right to run for president, even as a felon under our constitution, which I know is remarkable to a lot of people around the world, but he is doesn't disqualify him. That doesn't mean that the judge, I think he ends up in the top 10% category, requiring some sort of home confinement slash incarceration. I don't know if that's four months or a year. And the timing of it will be interesting for Judge Mershon. All, all in the hands of Judge Mershon. It, it, he, they're not going to be able to cut it off by asking the appellate division, first department's not going to be sentencing Donald Trump. The Court of Appeals is not going to be sentencing Donald Trump. The Supreme Court is not going to be sentencing Donald Trump. Judge Mershon, who's been mercilessly attacked to this moment uh, by Donald Trump and his minions and his family and everybody else, he's the person who's also holding and keeping his, his, his powder dry about how he's going to handle Donald Trump's past violations of the gag order, criminal contempt related to that, and future. And why that's important, and to answer the question that some people are asking, does the conviction mean that he's violated his terms of release and his conditions of release in his other criminal cases in Georgia, in D.C. election interference, and in my and in Florida, no, because it's new crimes. This was old crimes that just that they that we, he just got convicted on. If he commits new crimes since they set those conditions, but criminal contempt would constitute a new crime. And and I, I assure you, the prosecutors are going to run to the judges if he if he's found guilty of committing a new crime, and that is the third rail. That is what Donald Trump dancing on the on, on this electrified third rail every time he tries to pander to his audience to quote unquote get elected or raise money. This is what he this is what uh, could happen to him in terms of next steps. He goes through this process in the next couple of weeks. He meets with the probation. They prepare a report. The prosecution prepares a report and recommendation about what they think the proper sentence is. So does the defense. We know what the defense is going to say. Uh, no conviction, probation at best. And prosecution is going to say X number of years. And then the timing is important. Do the Does he make him go right in, in July, off the sentence, if there is a sentence that has confinement or incarceration? Or does the judge says, I'm going to suspend your sentence until after November 5th? to allow you to continue to campaign. I don't know. This is going to be within the mind of the judge. He may think I can solve a problem by giving him the sentence so the American people know that he's a sentence felon, but delaying his reporting to the Bureau of Prisons version in New York 
until after we see the election results. But then he's got to deal with, well, what happens if something goes awry and he's elected president about that incarceration? So these are things you and I are going to have to kind of, with Karen, kind of drill down on even more. In terms of the results, if he is sentenced in July, he will not, and it's not probation, and he has not completed his sentence. By the time of election day, he's off the voting po- he's off the voting rolls. Even New York, which rest- I'm not sure where he votes. I think he votes in Florida. Even Florida, which restores the rights of felons to vote, but only after they've completed their term plus a number of years. So he will not have completed his term, and that unless the Florida legislature, you know, with with DeSantis, uh, somehow makes a special exception for Donald Trump. I'm not sure we're going to see that iconic photo of Donald Trump voting for himself on Election Day. Well, welcome back. If you like lawyers talking about things, they know what they're talking about at the intersection of law and politics. You've come to the right place. It's called Legal AF, the podcast, and now you know why we call it that. We do the show on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then the leaders of Legal AF, Karen Freeman, Nick Niffalo, uh, Ben Mycellus, and me, Michael Popak, we do hot takes like this one at that same intersection of law and politics about every hour right here on the Midas Touch Network. Free subscribe, help them get to 3 million free subscribers. We're literally building this network with our bare hands and yours. If you know all about Legal Life, we really appreciate you being a part of our audience and along for the ride. Take that clip, if you will, be our ad hoc marketing department. We need it. Send it off to people in your life and say, hey, Legal AF, that show that I love, here's a clip. Maybe they'll join us and help expand our audience. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that was Legal AF, and I'm Michael Popak, and I invite you to become part of our audience. We do that show again Wednesday, Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern time, um, uh, and then on uh, audio podcast platforms of your choice. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.